Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for August 17 through to August 21st, 2012, with a significant coronal hole formation rotating through the earth facing position over the next 24 to 36 hours. The deep components of this coronal hole represent a potential of a 7.2 magnitude earthquake for this watch. We're now looking at the latest coronal hole information with the Solar Trestle Activity Report and Solar Monitors 193 Angstrom in the split screen format. From these images we we'll see a very powerful coronal hole formation CH529 set to rotate the earth facing position in around 24 to 36 hours. And this large coronal hole formation may be indicative of a 7.2 magnitude earthquake and it will become geoeffective on August 18 into August 19. We're now looking at the SDO composite moving imagery and focusing on this large coronal hole formation in the southern hemisphere of the solar corona. Now this coronal hole formation CH529 is developing quite strong characteristics in the southern component and I feel this will be the main area of focus for this watch. We're now looking at the latest solar wind telemetry from ACE where we see currently solar winds are at 480 kilometers a second. Now these levels should fall over the next 24 to 36 hours but should pick up again upon the arrival of the high speed solar wind stream from coronal hole formation CH529 as its high speed solar wind stream buffets the Earth's magnetic field. So we should see a seismic shock or a strong earthquake potential on August 17 or 18 based on this movement on the Earth's magnetic field. We're now looking to WSA NL solar wind prediction animation where we see two halo coronal mass ejections are en route to the Earth although very weak. One of these coronal mass ejections is aimed north of the ecliptic and won't be affecting the Earth but there is a weak coronal mass ejection which may buffer the Earth's magnetic field sometime on August 17, which may see a slight rise in solar winds during that time frame. We're now using the 171, 211 and 193 angstrom images and focusing on this large coronal hole formation. After further analysis, I have isolated 15 to 19 degrees south latitude as a main area of focus for this watch. I'll now plot a map some regions I feel will be most at risk for this significant earthquake based on solar symmetry as best mapped to the Earth. My number one area of concern is for South America for this watch for a potential 7.2 magnitude earthquake. The areas of focus are Tarapaca, Chile and adjacent in the Potosi, Bolivia regions. There's also a slight chance that it may be off the coast of southern Peru and also stretching down towards Antofagasta in Chile and Salta, Argentina. Before this watch I'm going to be concentrating on Tarapaca, Chile and Potosi, Bolivia. And my second and final area of concern is for the South Pacific Islands, specifically the regions of Vanuatu, Fiji or in Tonga. We're now looking at the Australian Pulsation PC3 Index. A series of strong readings have been registered over the last three hours. Now this is a good indicator of strong earthquake potentials for the Southern Hemisphere in the coming days. This is definitely worth watching and keeping close track of. We're now looking at the global real-time ionospheric map and we're now starting to see some powerful readings registered on this service. 15 megahertz the last 24 to 48 hours has been picked up in South America and Central America. Antofagasta in Chile, 23 to 24 degrees south latitude has had strong readings the last few days, but a brand new reading has been centered in Central America, specifically the regions of Dominican Republic, Haiti and the Caribbean Sea. Now these readings need to be monitored closely as there may be an indication of a strong earthquake potential in one of these zones in the coming weeks. Now we do need to talk about this very large earthquake that occurred yesterday, the 7.7 .7 magnitude event in the Sea of Okhotsk region in Russia. Now this was an extremely significant earthquake as it was widely felt across the globe with seismographs going off around 10 to 12 minutes later. Now this event is extremely important as it was very deep and this means that the energy contained from this earthquake is still yet to be expressed. So I'm expecting more earthquake potentials to arrive from this large earthquake in the coming days as well. We're now looking at the Sea of Okhotsk with Google Earth. And from this we see no historical data of any earthquakes in and around the general vicinity of the epicenter of the 7.7 .7 magnitude event that occurred yesterday, the nearest being at around 185 kilometers away. Now this is not occurring on a fault line either, which is also an interesting factor. The fault line is running through the Sakhalinskaya region and a fair way away from the epicenter of this earthquake. Now we did have a series of earthquakes in the Kuril Islands a week or two earlier, and this may have been a contributing factor to this large earthquake. But the depth of this earthquake is a concern and I do feel it will migrate and cause some more trouble in terms of earthquake potentials felt here on Earth. Now the deep earthquakes in the past have migrated south and I'll plot a map some regions I feel will be most at risk for a possible migration of this earthquake. I do feel these energies are heading south, specifically south of Australia and south of New Zealand may be at risk for a strong earthquake, possibly over 6.5 in magnitude. 
and the most likely areas specifically would be the Macquarie Islands region, the Auckland Islands region, and even stretching up towards the Alpine fault line just on the bottom edge of the South Island, New Zealand. These would be the main areas of concern of a strong earthquake in the coming days from this very large earthquake that occurred yesterday. And that's my volcano and earthquake watch for August 15. For more information, please visit my website at solarwatcher.net where I'll be providing more content for members and subscribers. Annotations will be added during and at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.